If you're in New Zealand, you have to bungee jump. Bungee, 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 bungee. Three, two, one. Oh. I'm Thomas. I'm Tim. And we're traveling around the world from city to city. For each city we visit, we make contact with a local, a complete stranger to us, but someone who loves their city and wants to share that with us. We're on a mission to find out what cities mean to the people who live in them. It's a show about people, cities, traveling, culture, food, day life, music, nightlife, and everything in between. This is my city. city that's where we belong. Where are we? Um, we're at a friend's house in Sydney. We're about to take off for our last stop on this adventure. We'll be going to Wellington, New Zealand. We're going to get picked up by our host, Joe, who's in a band called Fat Freddy's Drop. I really enjoy their music. They also happen to be one of the most well-known bands in New Zealand. I'm looking forward to New Zealand because everything in New Zealand is spectacular. Wellington's in this amazing bay and the city is kind of built on these hills. And it's kind of interesting to see what city life is going to be like in a land that's all about countryside. And plus it's our last stop on this trip and we've got some energy to expend. We're gonna see Dawn once or twice, our good friend Dawn. So we arrived and we went straight to the lovely Museum Hotel in downtown Wellington. And we were met there by our producer Fred Fred was taking us to Alicia's birthday party. Alicia has partnered with Joe, our host, and they have a child together, Benny. They arranged to have this kind of big barbecue party at Ian and Emma's house. And Ian is the keyboard guy in Fat Freddy's Drop, and he's a master chef. There's a bunch of kids there, and people kept arriving all evening, and big house, big kitchen, like really good cooking space. Joe was trying to, you know, get to know us a bit. We were trying to get to know him. He looks cool, he dresses well. He's got personality, he doesn't really care like what anyone thinks of him. He's really into culture and music. And he's just got a really sound character. Joe is lucky enough to have the awesome job of full-time musician. He's also clearly a fan of good food and tasty beers. Have a try there. It's kind of hoppy. But yeah, we ate a slap-up meal. Ian was like a total chef. Him and his wife really know how to cook and they whip together one of the nicest tastiest feasts I've ever had at someone's house. While we were there, uh, we met Craig. Craig is a professional dive instructor, and he'd just come from free diving, where he'd caught a bunch of crayfish with his bare hands. And that man is like part walrus, part man. This one's about 15. There's a male. Yeah, I think it in front of He's the big fighting claws at the front. Craig invited us to go free diving with him, which was very exciting. I think we're going to be doing that in the next couple of days ourselves. <laughs> we just kind of like fell out of a plane into this birthday party of complete strangers, and they were really open and warm to us, cooked us a crazy great meal. It was just a great way to kick it all off. It was really, man, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what was arranged for us on Thursday morning was a tour of Te Papa Museum. We had Benny with us, and he was very excited. We're going to learn a little bit about New Zealand history, culture, Maori people. We were given a tour by a Maori girl. Her name was Te Kahurere Moa. She took us through a couple of exhibitions at Te Papa about the Maori, who are New Zealand's indigenous people. Each Māori person, they sort of have their own marae to go home to, but visitors and non-Māori people, this is your marae, this is where you come. So you're always welcome here. Yeah. Well, it's a really, really interactive museum as well. Like, I think interactive museums are perfect because the kids can have fun and the adults can have fun. After the Te Papa Museum, we headed out to Red Rocks because we were meeting Craig to go free diving. So we met at Splash Gordon's to get fitted for wetsuits. Free diving is pretty intense. It's basically diving without an oxygen tank. So it relies heavily on your swimming skills and your ability to hold your breath. I was definitely nervous about it. I wasn't expecting it to be as full on as it was. The water is really cold here. 
So you need a full wetsuit. You also need a weight belt because the, the wetsuit gives you so much buoyancy. And you're basically like an amphibian all of a sudden. This is extreme Arctic uh, conditions, boys. <laughs> Still diving. <laughs> We're heading round to uh, a place called Red Rocks, or, uh, in that direction of Red Rocks, south coast, south coast of uh, Wellington. We went to the first bay that was outside the marine reserve. And since you're not allowed to catch fish in the reserve, this bay was a choice spot to catch some crayfish. So Craig was like an instructor from the word go, and he was like very principled about all the things that are important about diving and safety, and also like respecting the ocean. But he was also like very excited just to go catch crayfish. We got a lesson on shore, and then we got most of the lesson in the water. This is okay, this is okay from far away, this is I have cramps, this is oh, come help me and you have to get used to being in a different space which is water and you're used to being in air. <laughs> you have to kind of change your consciousness and become a bit of a fish. We watched him do a bunch of diving. He just kind of go like, like his body turned into a fish and you'd see him just go like right down he went into this rock and stuck his hand in and then he comes out and he's got a crayfish and he's just swimming up to the surface. This guy's amazing. And just kind of swimming around, like hunting around the sea with him. That was just so much fun. An hour and a half in, Craig came over. He was like, yeah, you guys have been out for so long. It's time to go. And we had a long enough swim back in. And we finally got out of the sea, man. It was difficult to stand. Dry line feels weird, man. As soon as you get out of the water, the first thing you want to do is get that damn suit off. It's also one of the hardest things to do because it basically suctions to your body. Now that said, it was a really cool experience and I'd love to do some more free diving. Uh, what was today's catch? Today's catch, I think total seven crayfish and a handful of kinners and some good powers. Nice one. And some new friends. <laughs> but that guy's a legend. He really is. What are we about to do, Timmy? We're going to get fish and chips. And we're gonna go back to Joe's place and eat them. It's gonna be awesome. The plan was to go over to Joe and Alicia's place in Seatoon Heights. It's a suburb overlooking the massive harbor. A really beautiful view, really beautiful balcony. Keep going round this way, a couple of bays, to Wellington City. Right. It's <laughs> real nice. Well, yeah, we had a nice little like fish and chip dinner. Benny entertained us. He was talking about his t-shirt art. And he said if I brought him a t-shirt, he'd make me a t-shirt. Bring a white t-shirt like this, but bigger, and I'll do my best work on it. Talking like a real artist. He's like, what, what are you going to draw? I don't know, I'm just going to like wait to be inspired by the moment, you know. <laughs> Joe left because he was playing in a band that night. He plays in a couple other bands besides Fat Freddy's, one of which is The Canapes. And they were playing at a place called Havana's. And it's this really nice, dark and moody Cuban bar. It's just this band that gets together whenever everyone's in town. They just kind of play jazz standards that they improvise off of. Gio was playing the tuba, the trombone, and the stylophone. But man, he's a really good horn player. Yeah, it's just lovely, like, end to the first day. Kind of, Letting the sea drain out of your ears, letting the jazz flow in. <laughs> so Friday, we dedicated our day to alcohol. Started with a beer tasting, followed by a cocktail tasting, followed by an afternoon and evening of drinking. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday morning in Wellington. We're about to go to a beer tasting, and then we're going to go get some cocktails. Good morning. Morning. How are you doing, man? Uh, hello. All right. Sweet yeah. Trip. Yeah, we got a guided beer tour. Uh, we started at Max Brewery, which is a local brewery. There are six different Max varieties of beer. So the idea here is do all the looking and sniffing and sipping. Uh, no spitting. Okay. But other than that, it's, uh, it's very similar to a, to a wine tasting. It was fun, informative, and we had some tasty beers. There's a really big craft beer scene in New Zealand, especially for a country of its size. 
and Max Brewery was one of the first microbreweries. Joe and I just went for it. I remember the first place I finished mine and yours. I finished your beer for you. Thanks, bud. How was that, dude? You're still too early to be drinking, but hey, I'll just go with it. I did. And then we went to the Malt House and had four of their beers, and those were really good. And we had pizza. Uh, we're going to go like we did last time from lightest to darkest. So we're going to start off with four different beers from four different small breweries, four different styles, all European inspired, but with a very New Zealand twist on, on each of them. We're about to go and drink some cocktails. Then we went to a cocktail tasting at Hawthorne Bar. First thing we did was we had a shot of tequila just to clean the palate. Cheers. 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 That was good as well. He made us about six or seven cocktails. I requested a ginger beer type drink, and he's like, oh, I can do a dark and stormy. And then that kind of became the drink of the weekend. It's so good. The ginger beer here is phenomenal. Get, get a little of that, man. <laughs> there you go. After cocktails, we went to uh, Slow Boat Records, and there was a gig on there by the Phoenix Foundation. This was another local Wellington band that's had some international success. It was kind of cool. It was like a fun, family-friendly thing. It sounded really good. One of the guys in Phoenix Foundation, we also saw playing the canapes the night before. It seems like a pretty collaborative music scene here. People play in multiple bands and everyone knows everyone because it's such a tiny town. Then we went to Matterhorn. Here we are at the Matterhorn. This is a very famous Wellington haunt. Oh, you see over here, this is Fat Freddy's live album. It was recorded here at the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn is a Wellington institution and definitely one of the more popular bars in town. Really good food, really good drinks, great atmosphere, and just a great place to hang out. That's when we really started to connect. We were basically sitting in the back garden and you and Fred really started to bond. Friday evening, bonding time over at Pints. And tons of good food. And tons of good food. <laughs> then we went to Mighty Mighty, which is upstairs. Not very far to walk. Mighty Mighty is a great bar, by the way. And we spent a lot of time there, and I would definitely recommend going to it if you come here. It's a good place to hang out. And there were two bands on that night, one of which he said we definitely had to check out. They were called the Orchestra of Spheres. They play all their own homemade instruments. The biscuitin guitar, electric bass, carry on, uh, the sexo mouse marimba. I have no idea what these things are. They were just sort of like a weird psychedelic jam band. The cool thing about it is they didn't really interact with the audience. They're just like, we're just gonna play this music and you're gonna dance to it. It's gonna be great. The drinks kept flowing, the good times kept rolling. And then we ended up on Courtney Place. Courtney Place has all the more commercial big bars. Are we going to get a Guinness? Yeah. And we had four pints of Guinness to end the evening. That was a good, fun evening. Got to know Fred, got to know Joe, got to know the like, local scene a little bit. <laughs> on Saturday, we started off in Fidel's for breakfast with Alicia and Benny and Joe and Fred. We had a big veggie breakfast. Veggie feast. The plan was Joe wanted to take us on like a little walking tour of Cuba Street. We were walking down Cuba Street now. It's one of the more vibrant and funky places in town. It got its name from that HMS Cuba, which um, traveled to Wellington in the early days. It's just where I come. If I'm hanging out in town, I'll end up walking down Cuba Street, running into people or going record shopping. So we'll show you a few of my favorite haunts. <laughs> a weekly endeavor. Yeah. One of my favorite second-hand clothes stores. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so after some shopping, we went to Mighty Mighty, and we went to an event there called Dr. Sketchy. Alicia took Benny home, and I was like, boy time. This is the Wellington branch of Dr. Sketchy. 
Uh, Dr. Sketch is an international cabaret burlesque life drawing event, so it's mostly about life drawing. We always put it in an environment like a pub or a bar, so there's music and there's drink, and it's a lot more social and more relaxed than a normal life drawing class. It's just cool because you know, you get like a burlesque performance and you know, everyone kind of gets rowdy and like woo -hoo, woo And it just kind of gets the crowd loosened up a little bit. <laughs> burlesque brings in like all sorts of people, yeah, and it's really, really nice to see. There's also all types of mediums. There's pencils, charcoals, watercolors, pens. And there was one girl that was super hot. And she was the one I got to draw and I was like, oh nice, I get to draw this girl. And then her pose was her back. I was like, you have the most luscious lips I've ever seen, and your pose is your back. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. You know, my first time doing life drawing, so. I'm proud of you. Thanks, man. It means a lot. <laughs> I thought it was great fun, and a nice way of spending a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> So then after that, we were going to Ian's place to eat the crayfish that Craig had caught a couple of days previous. I was already really excited, A, because it was crayfish, and B, because it was Ian cooking. Ian prepared it in a manner that he had learned on tour. So this is one of the choice things about touring for, for me, is, you know, wherever possible to talk to people from the countries that we go and pick up little bits and pieces of recipes and stuff like that. We also had butterfish, which Craig also caught. Ian was saying how the butterfish are a vegetarian fish, so you really can't catch one with a line. So Craig caught this one with his spear gun. Mmm, so soft. So soft. Uh, uh, I'm just melting your mouth. And we all kind of ate on the counter. It's kind of just like dig in with your hands, dip the bread in the sauce. Lovely. With some good beer that we tasted the day before. But there is a real hunter-gatherer vibe there, and they're not too precious about anything. There's a tradition of making it work by yourself in New Zealand, because you're so isolated. You just have to kind of go for it yourself. How's that? I can't stop eating. Fabulous. I couldn't ask for much more, really. <laughs> What's happening? Well, we're going into town. Into the city! Alicia came out with us that night, and it was girly night. There was like her and seven or eight of her girlfriends at Fidel's. <laughs> Seriously, it's the last Saturday night of our world trip. We're at a bunch of great people, and we're gonna f***ing go ahead into town and see how far we can push it. Sorry, I get very excited. <laughs> we left there, we went to Havana. You were having a budding relationship with a young lady named Flick. Go for a shot. Go for a shot. Go for a shot. Saturday night. It was just a bit of a blur, as only a Saturday night can be. We went from one pub to the next. Uh, I suppose it got late somehow. You had gone home with Flick. I was left with Joe and Fred and Alicia. We went on a bit of a mental bar crawl, which is very, very hazy. But I know there was some podium dancing, and I know there was shots, and I know there was a couple of different bars. And then all of a sudden it was done. It's just f***ing done, is it? Oh yeah, we can keep going if we want to. Do you want to go to another ugly bar? No. Okay. And we decided to come back to the hotel. There was lots of champagne and some performance art. I was like, oh f there's people in this apartment. And the, this door slides, it doesn't lock. Are you starting to release? <laughs> oh! Flick was a really good sport about it, because we basically had to join the party. Ah! which is exactly what we did. So it was a good night. All in all, craziness, yeah. adventure, misadventure. Just what you wanted. Just what we needed. So Sunday was awesome. Sunday was one of my favorite days on the entire trip, I gotta say. What are we doing now, Joe? We're going for all driving. Um, Walter down here is gonna give us a scare. Yeah, some people like to spend the hungover day in the pub. Some people like to spend it in the spa. We spend it off-roading. <laughs> we had met Walter Wednesday. He has this off-road, four-wheel drive, seven-seat vehicle. And we brought Benny along, and it was myself, yourself, Joe, Fred, and Walter. And it was really, really good fun. This man was really serious about his off-roading, a real professional. So when did you start driving? Uh, when I was about 11. I didn't get my license until I was 30. <laughs> <laughs> 
There are so many different ways to deal with a hangover, and this is the best one. We went and we bought fried chicken and beer. What are you eating? Chicken. And then we <laughs> sat in a four-wheel drive seven-seater and just cruised around the south side. You guys were in the very back, which had the most bouncy action. Yeah. <laughs> we went through Devil's Gate, and it's some of those places I just couldn't believe you could drive through, you know, anything. I know. Oh, did something get wet? Oh. Basically, this truck could go over anything. We would just go up slopes like this and just hang out. We stopped to check out Red Rocks' well-known seal colony. We went off the coastline and took a tour up this valley along a riverbed. And we got off and got onto the roof. A lovely little Sunday activity to like get out there and get into it. It was brilliant. I think we're doing a three-point turn. <laughs> you know, you see those things in movies. You see those landscapes like, oh my God, where on earth is that? That's just beautiful. And then to be in them, it's just such a special feeling. That was like one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen in my life. Before we left Wellington, Joe wanted to take us up to the wind turbine. Which is way up in the hills, and uh, it was pretty spectacular up there. In Wellington, you can kind of get a sense of the place because you can see it all. It's all very small, and you can drive to all these viewpoints within a matter of minutes. So if you ever want to kind of get a sense of the whole place, you just have to like drive up the hill, and there it is. I think it would be a really attractive place to live. That idea is like having a small place where you know everybody and you run into people you know all the time. Wind energy is really big here and you can definitely see why. We've been here five or six days. It's been blowing a gale every single day. Wellington is seriously windy. But there's something about being in the wind. It kind of keeps you moving. It blows out any cobwebs. It also kind of blows out any stagnation. I think that kind of really adds to the vibrancy of the place. Wellington's fantastic because it's gorgeous. There's lots of nature. You can do awesome things. It's got a big music scene, a great nightlife, and really cool people. <laughs> I think Joe just really wanted to show us a good time. He's a good dad, knowledgeable guy, knew how to have fun, good musician, good outlook on life. The Kiwis are just nice. Darling people, you know, really, really nice. What a perfect end to the trip. I think it was actually one of the best weekends we've had and one of the most action-packed weekends we've had. And New Zealand is wicked. Say it again. I love New Zealand. I love Wellington. I'd love to come back here more as well. I don't know, it's in the middle of nowhere, but I can see why you would live here, you know? <laughs>